Here to respond to that rather ominous message is Matt Schlapp, chairman of the American Conservative Union, Raheem Kassam, fellow at the American Principles Project, and Raymond Arroyo, Fox News contributor. Raymond, today, some of the 2020 Dems, they try to like back away a little bit from these obviously mm -hmm. anti-religious freedom statements made at that equality town hall. But is this backing away really credible? Well, I'm not sure it is, Laura, because every one of them supports something called the Equality Act. Speaker Pelosi proposed this last March. Essentially, it would give RuPaul more federal protections than the Little Sisters of the Poor. Now, let me qualify that, okay? This is an anti-discrimination piece of legislation that exalts a sexual identity, gender preference, above just about anything else. And there are real-world implications. Hospitals that refuse to perform certain gender reassignment surgeries, they could be shut down. The religious grounds, there are no religious exemptions under the Equality Act. Uh, when you talk about orphanages, when you, when you start talking about kids who think they're transgender, the parental rights could be taken away from parents if they deny these kids certain hormonal treatments or surgical treatments. And as I mentioned, the little sister of the poor, Laura, they have been battling the Obamacare oh my legislation, God, which, not a legislation, it was just a rule that forced them to deny their own conscience and pay for abortifacients and contraceptives. They're still battling that in court, and Obama signed this so in this 2016. Is, I want everyone to understand tonight, and this is so important, and I think a lot of people aren't covering this, but this is actually where there is real skin in the game for everyone, Matt Schlapp. Yeah, that's uh, this is This is not hyperbole. Yeah. This is, it sounds good to call something the Equality Act, but like, but like so many other pieces of legislation, the euphemistic language doesn't capture what's in the details. Yeah, and what it really was was empowerment to the trial bar to be able to go after the Catholic Church and Christian churches and shut them down, because here's where we are, Lord, today. We are to the point where Beto says you can't really be a church if you discriminate. And that's but, what he said, and that's what he means. And what Beto mm -hmm. is fine with is discriminating against believers and people of faith in this country in every conceivable way. When you say you're going to take away the tax exemption to the church and you're not going to allow uh, institutions like the University of Notre Dame to receive any kind of uh, federal benefit for their students or anything that's that happens on campus, that's absolute discrimination. Let me tell you, I say this this next campaign. It's not just about socialism, it's about secularism. And there's, a, and there's a combination of the two. Socialism, yes, it's about economics, but it's about something more fundamental. They don't respect your right to have your own beliefs and to make your own decisions now, in your life. Raheem, they think your beliefs, Judeo, it's Judeo, it's Christian, it's, it's Muslim. I mean, he was very explicit. And when they say, oh, Beto's an outlier, he is not an outlier. AOC is as close to being a thought leader in the Democrat Party as there exists today. Raheem. This isn't just about the promotion of, of secularism. Let's be very clear about this. This is cancelling Christianity. That's what's going on here. This is cancelling traditional values, even amongst uh, uh, Jewish families, against Muslim families, but prim primarily we know what they're coming after here. And this goes back, interestingly, to about 2005 in its latest iteration. George Soros sponsored a conference at Yale. It was called uh, uh, the new Rehabilitating the Constitution. They thought they had it locked up and that by 2020, it was called Constitution 2020, that they would be able to change this whole thing, to, mm. uh, to remove the undergirding of everything that America is. And when you think about everything that's happened since that conference and the people who were there, who then were in the Obama administration, you like your doctor, you can keep your doctor. Lie. We're not coming after your guns. Lie. Look at this now. You know, gay marriage was the end of it, and we're not going to go any further. Lie. No, Obama said he was against gay marriage. Then he Ran admitted it was, they admitted it was a lie. It a was a lie. lie. Right? And Americans have a really stark choice in the next election. It's do you trust the people who have consistently now lied to you time and time again about incursions into your mm. private life, into your children's lives, into the fact that, as Raymond was saying earlier, that now this Equality Act, you'll have, you'll have young men running again, running track against young girls in schools. Happening all over. My, my high school year. in Glastonbury, Connecticut is a huge, huge issue. This is, I mean, so again, people want to say we don't like this tweet or that tweet or Trump's tone. He should have said that. Okay. At some point, it's a choice, Raymond. It's a choice between religious liberty, free expression, the First Amendment, the bill, entire Bill of Rights, frankly. They want to yeah. have, we're going to get into this next segment. They want to hold a whole tribunal to kick a president out of office in secret. Okay, this runs roughshod over every constitutional principle. Go. It just doesn't make 
political sense. The Democrats, this didn't really get covered. In August, the Democratic National Committee, they voted on a proclamation to exalt, venerate those with no religious affiliation, basically people who are agnostic or atheistic. Do they think this endears them in any way to the, the base of religious voters who are in Trump's camp? Try to win those people over. Instead, they've built their own wall, and it's a wall that mm -hmm. pushes religious people aside and religious expression even further outside what they consider the mainstream. This is political suicide for the Democratic Party. I don't know why they would do this, but yeah, with this well, kind of talk and support the Equality Act, I don't see how it ends well politically for them uh, in a national race. Well, it means that Donald Trump has done make this a central issue. Matt hit on that. It's this is this is women, mm. moms. Uh, it, these are people mm. across the board. They just want to be able to raise their kids with their own values. That's right. But they're told that right. they're evil and they're discriminatory and they're terrible people and they're all the other things that they're told. And I think after a while, people don't like that. Like. I'm just living my life. Leave me alone. You, you live your life the way you want. Don't cram down your values to me. By the way, Matt, Cory Booker said he would use the federal government to target schools that resist this agenda. Watch. Schools should allow people to use the bathrooms that conforms with their gender identity. But we cannot stop there. We must use our Department of Justice and our Department of Education's Civil Rights Division to go after schools that are denying people equal rights and equal protections. Now, Matt, more people are seeing the CNN town hall on this show, but this it's show important. Right it's important. We're Very playing right. this for a reason. Most people didn't watch this. This is where the party is going, using government as a weapon against the people, not to make the people's lives better. It started with Obama spying on reporters, sending FCC lawyers into newsrooms. Then it went to uh, the D.C. government asking for the sermons of pastors to see if there was, like, hate speech. And now you have Cory Booker, who is literally running to be the president of the United States, saying he's going to use the DOJ to go against the American people who have the same beliefs that George Washington had and our founders. Oh, no, that that Obama, Jimmy Carter had. That Obama had. That Obama had. had. That's, I mean, that's Obama would be considered what today? In this Democrat Party, with what he can and what he said. We're red state of America, blue state. We're Amer United States of America. No, 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 no. We are now, they, they want to just, just be blue state America. Red state America, if you have to die in a bunch of opioid addiction, that's just too bad. Like, just, we don't really care about you. You're that's the yeah. message. And, and, if, and if there's a home invader coming to your house, Beto O'Rourke wants you to have a Greta Thunberg approved paper straw pea shooter instead of a gun mm. to be able to take out home invaders. Right? There's That's a, where this is. There, and there's some dishonest moments in the media lately. This is one of them. Elizabeth Warren had a viral moment at last week's town hall after an audience member asked this question. The supporter approaches you and says, Senator, I am old fashioned and my faith teaches me that marriage is between one man and one woman. What is your response? Well, I'm going to assume it's a guy who said that. And I'm going to say, then just marry one woman. <laughs> Assuming you can find one. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, Raymond, I mean, it turns out the questioner, of course, you knew it was a choreograph. Mm -hmm. I think we all knew it. it was so obviously right. a plant. Someone named Morgan Cox, actually a big Warren donor. OK, Washington yeah. Times saying he's twice reached the legal max of twenty seven hundred dollars mm -hmm. donations to the Senate campaign of Warren and her presidential campaign. Laura, so why wasn't, you know, they, they pulled this off, this little scheme, and CNN, I guess, was, didn't know about it, was it. fine about it, or Jeff Zucker was applauding it, whatever. It was a cute response. There were a lot of cute responses, but let me lay it out for the American people what's at stake. There is a rich religious social service network in this country. They serve the homeless. They, they're educational leaders. They're, they have hospitals. We are risking shutting all of those down, and uh, orphanages have already gone out of business, hospitals are endangered, and I just read a case, a man identifying as a woman wanted access to a woman's homeless shelter. They turned him down. He's continually suing them, trying to get access to the place. What do you think they're going to eventually do? Either shut down or give up because of the litigation. This is what the Equality Act and this vision being put forward could lead us to. It's a bad end. Bad for America, bad for those looking and needing yeah. help on the streets tonight. Uh, across the board, this conversation is critical for the election next year. These are the issues that must not be skirted. People have to have the guts to talk about them. They go right to parental rights. Guys, thank you so much tonight. And coming up.